Hello and welcome back to the channel. I'm just saying my piece. Uh, glad you could join me. This is number seven in the series Building Your Dream House in Jamaica. And this episode, we will be talking about roofing. I would also like to thank all my loyal subscribers. And I'd also like to welcome all the new people who have joined, who have subscribed, and we strive to grow the channel. For all the people who are watching and who have not subscribed yet, I would urge you to just hit that subscribe button there so you can be notified whenever i put out new content it's that little red button that says subscribe in the lower right hand side of the page so having talked extensively about slab roof we are now going to talk about what's called your traditional type of roofing now this so-called traditional type of roofing comes in a wide variety of styles and types and the different types depend on usually the region that you live in and the different purposes for which the roof will be put. If you live in, say, the Caribbean, then you may require a different type of roofing from if you are living in North America where there is lots of snow or high winds. So then the exact type of roofing that you will select for your housing project will depend on the conditions under which the roof will have to operate. For our purposes in Jamaica, we are going to concentrate on three distinct uh, roofing designs. We have your hipped roofing, gabled and skillion or flat roof. A hipped roof is defined as a roof where all the sides slope downwards from the center towards the wall, sort of like a pyramid. A gable roof is a roof that has two roofing sections that slope downwards in opposite directions from each other and meet in a ridge in the center of the roof. Now, there is no hard and fast rule that says a roof has to be completely gabled or completely hipped. There can be combinations of of gable and hipped and in many instances that is what will happen in most houses and of course a flat roof speaks for itself the roof is completely flat a flat roof is also known in some circles and in some localities as a skillion roof now there is actually a slight difference between what is considered a flat roof and what is considered a skillion roof a skillion roof tends to have a slightly higher pitch than uh, what's considered a flat roof but the concept is exactly the same the roof is completely flat on top there are no ridges there are no hips no shoulders no gables nothing of that sort it's a completely flat roof now for our purposes in jamaica we are going to put both gabled and hipped roof in the same category as opposed to the flat roof because the advantages and disadvantages of a gabled and a hip roof are pretty much the same as opposed to a flat roof the most expensive and the most complex of roofs in all these three categories is going to be your hipped roof. This involves the most labor. The hipped roof involves the most lumber and it is far more complex and therefore a lot more labor intensive. So it will take a lot more time. As a matter of practicality, generally speaking, it is much simpler and more cost effective to construct a gabled roof as opposed to a hipped roof. There are some practical reasons to choose these three types of roofing as opposed to any other type. In any case, most of the other types of roofings are simply variations on these three types of roofing. So we are, as I said, we're just going to concentrate on these three. But regardless of which of the three we choose, there are going to be some basic things that will affect the way the roof performs. And uh, one of those things is going to be overhang. The more overhang you have on your roof is the more likely it will be affected affected by the wind. The less overhang, of course, is the less likely it will be affected by the wind. On the other hand, a small or no overhang is not aesthetically pleasing. In other words, it's ugly. And, uh, you know, people really don't want to, regardless of how much money you're trying to save, you really don't want to make an ugly house. It's as simple as that. That is also one of the reasons why people tend to move away from the flat roof or the skillion roof. But 
but depending on the design of the house, the skillion roof or a flat roof can be quite pleasing as I will show you in these examples that you see coming up right here. Now the next most important thing that will affect the design and performance of your conventional or traditional roof is really the pitch of the roof. That is to say whether or not it goes up steeply or it is too low. And of course pitch is defined as the steepness of the roof expressed as a ratio or as a degree that the surface of the roof deviates from the horizontal. So as the steepness of the roof starts to go up, then you start to talk about pitch. The performance of your roof in high wind conditions is highly dependent on the pitch of the roof. If the pitch is too low, then the performance of the roof will be poor. If the pitch is too high, then the performance will also be poor. Now, studies have shown that the best performance, the best pitch performance of your roof will be what's called your 712 or 30 degree pitch in hurricane conditions, simply because our roofs exist in a high wind area we have lots of hurricanes so any roof that is constructed, these hurricanes and high wind conditions need to be taken into account. The concept of earthquake is almost irrelevant in this respect if we are talking about a conventional roof. Because in a conventional roof, there is no expectation that the roof will contribute significantly to the structural integrity of the house relative to an earthquake. So with that in mind, let us think about the performance of your gabled roof and your hipped roof. Your hipped roof will have better performance because there will be angled surfaces presented to the breeze regardless of what direction that wind is coming from. Whereas on your gabled roof, there will be almost certainly one side or the other that will present a strong resistance and where the breeze will likely try to get on that and lift it off. Whereas with your hip roof, there will be angled surfaces that will be presented to the wind, regardless of what direction the wind is coming from. Imagine that your roof is something like an aeroplane wing when your roof is pitched. So the wind, as it blows along the roof, it goes up over that surface and it goes back down the other side of the surface. What that does is to create a low pressure area above your roof. Now, the inside of your house still has the normal pressure and the faster the wind blows over your roof is the lower the pressure on top of your roof. So essentially what is happening is that the pressure on the inside of your house is getting higher and higher with respect to the pressure on the outside. So it is as if a very, very strong giant is inside of your roof pushing on it towards the outside. So so normally you would imagine that there are two giants which is atmospheric pressure pushing on your roof one from the outside and one from the inside and those two pressures are even now as the speed of the hurricane or the wind increases the pressure goes down on the outside as it goes up and over your roof so it is creating a low pressure on top of your roof the pressure on the inside is still high as it has always been and that rips your roof right off the top of your house. To mitigate these factors, engineers have developed what is called a hurricane strap. Hurricane straps are used on your trusses and your beams to tie those down securely to the walls of your house and prevent the breeze from ripping your roof off the house. But as we said, the overhang is extremely important and what you do not want is for the breeze to find some somewhere to get underneath the roof and that is why you have your soffit. So you try to minimize your overhang and limit it to somewhere around 24 inches or 2 feet. Of course part of the reason for having the soffit is to give the end of your roof and overhang a more finished look but it also has a more practical application in that it also helps to limit the amount of wind that gets up and under your roof and therefore limits the amount of damage that the wind can cause. 
cars in a high wind condition. Now, as to the intricacies of actually constructing a conventional roof, that is something I'm not going to speak to. That is best left to the tradesmen and the architect to work out as it relates to the particular design of the house. However, we should talk about material because some materials are in fact completely unsuitable for our conditions. Now, recently I noticed that the National Housing Trust has been offering some new houses and they are on the cheaper side to be perfectly honest and uh, the roofing is what caught my attention apart from the method of construction and these roofs were made of essentially asphalt compositions some of them were offered in shingles and some of them were offered in what is generally known as a rolled flat these are flexible shingles they are laid in the normal way that you would put a shingle on the roof well there are two issues with this the ends of the shingles are not fastened down they are simply laid down so there is somewhere around a six to eight inch section of shingle that is in fact not fastened down this is somewhere that the wind will easily get under and rip the entire thing off of your roof and you are left with only the plywood decking if you are lucky the same thing applies to the asphalt rolled flat now in a high wind situation the same issue applies where the wind will find the edges get under it and rip those edges off and leaving you with only your roof decking the second issue of course is the fact that under tropical conditions this sort of asphalt roofing does very very poorly it does not stand up to the high heat of the sun and that constant tug of war between a lot of rain and a lot of sun so it breaks down very very quickly and in short order you are going to have to replace your roof so it is not a cost effective option under any circumstances that's one of the types of roofing that i do not recommend of course you have other types of roofing material common roofing materials like clay tiles and concrete tiles and slate and so on. Now these are actually very nice looking uh, roofing materials. They add glamour to your roof. They are beautiful but the problem that those types of roofing material have is that technically most of them are not actually fastened onto your roof. Clay tiles and concrete tiles especially they can be formed into beautiful shapes, repetitive shapes. Problem that they have as I've said before is that they cannot be fastened on. They remain on the roof by virtue of the shape and how they are laid onto the roof so in high wind conditions they are easily disturbed and destroyed and of course being very expensive that is hardly a recommendation for us in our high wind and hurricane prone area of course these types of tiles are prominent in places like japan china and other asian countries and they are also prominent in places like italy and other european countries but wholly unsuitable really for our tropical conditions another good Good option that can be considered in our situation is wooden shingles or shakes as they are now being called. They provide extremely good wind resistance if they are properly installed. Usually they are made from cedar and cedar is a wood that does not rot under normal circumstances so they will last for years, decades as a matter of fact. And if you go out into the country areas in Jamaica you will see a lot of very old houses that still have their old wooden shingles on them. So shingle is a good alternative. The issue with shingle in this case is that it's extremely expensive and the craftsmanship, people who are familiar with installing wooden shingles are few and far between. So it would be an extremely expensive option for anybody who wants to install shingles. In our tropical condition, the first, last and best option is metal roof. Metal roofing comes in a wide variety of shapes, sizes and and the types of metal corrugated steel or zinc as we call them in Jamaica those come in different sizes of corrugation different lengths for different purposes and so on and in fact corrugated steel is the single most cost-effective roofing material that we can use in our tropical condition except for your slab roofing it lasts a very long time it is if properly installed is highly resistant to high wind conditions
conditions and uh, it can be easily formed in intricate shapes and installed and sort all sorts of different types of roofing including gable hip and skillion or slanted or flat roof now it takes a certain amount of skill to install and skillion and flat roof flat roofs do have a poor performance in high wind conditions and this is because wind tend to force water up underneath the ends of your corrugated steel which is usually what is used in flat roofs in our tropical conditions in Jamaica that is the reason why we say that flat roofs perform poorly but in terms of corrugated metal it is the single most cost effective option it lasts a very very long time there are other options in terms of metal there is aluminium or alu steel there is also copper for those who can afford it because copper is also used for roofing metal roofing come in many many shapes and forms and can be installed in all sorts of attractive ways so metal is your best bet and that is what i would recommend so basically your cheapest and most effective type of roofing is going to be your flat roof of course any type of design can be attractive and aesthetically pleasing it simply depends on how well the design is executed and of course for our tropical purposes corrugated steel is going to be your most cost effective roofing material apart from slab now let's not forget that a roof consists of two basic parts and one of them is the outer section the outer material that we have been discussing so far and of course there is the inner section or the frame to which this outer section of the material is attached so in part two we will discuss things like joists rafters beams decking and uh, whether or not we should use plywood versus particle board we'll also discuss flashings and moisture barriers and the modern cost effective replacements that you can use instead of many of these things because modern technology can replace most boards with metal and uh, you end up with a, a stronger and lighter product and even with board you can still replace your normal board with what is called engineered board and that will be in our discussion in part two so again we'd like to say thank you for watching thanks for staying with me for this long this has been quite a long one and i must also apologize for it being a bit late but again thanks for watching don't forget to like subscribe and share the videos and as always you have a great day